Hey guys! So last time when I asked what content you would like to see, I was asked to do a series with debunking myths. I was thinking about it for a while because I wasn't sure if I should really do it because I'm not the person who likes to start shit storms on the internet or starts arguing with people and tries to convince them to change their opinion. But then after a while I saw there's so so much misinformation out there. So I decided to start the series. So welcome to the first episode. Today we're going to speak about oils. Is oil bad for you? Often, especially in the vegan community, there are two camps. One camp is pro oil and the other camp is, oh my god, oil is so bad. Now, in this video, I will provide you some scientific evidence and give you also my take on oil. And I don't want to make it to a really boring science video. That's why I decided to make it more in a coffee talk style. Cheers! First of all, I want to start with an argument that is kind of against my opinion. I'm pretty much aware of the study where Dr. Esselens was able to reverse coronary artery disease. I know about the study. There were 198 patients with cardiovascular diseases and they were put on a plant-based diet for a pretty long time. The special thing about this diet was that it didn't only exclude the animal products, but all kinds of fat, especially added oils. But also in this study, the subjects were advised to use flax seeds because they are a good source of omega-6 and omega-3 essential fatty acids. They're super important. So, so guys, even if you are in the no oil, I hate oil, whatever camp, get your omega-3s and omega-6 and you really need them to be healthy. I don't care about anything else. You can hate oil, you can hate me, you can hate my advice, but just to stay healthy, get either flax seeds or chia seeds in every day. So what were the outcomes of the study? Well, for the patients who, who adhered to the diet, it was pretty amazing. 81% of the people showed improvements. In the cohort that didn't adhere to the diet, 0% showed an improvement, which is really bad. And in the adherent cohort, 8% were stable and only 10% got worse, in contrast to 62% in the non-adherent patients. Actually, it is a really cool outcome because so, so many patients improved. But still don't forget, it isn't the magic diet that works for everyone because 10% of the people got worse. Guys, please don't judge me. I'm super skeptical. That's the way I read all research papers. I don't see only the positive sides you hear on the internet or in media. Without a control group, it is challenging to establish causality and to assess how much of the observed changes are specifically due to the diet. Only some of the observed beneficial outcomes may have been due to the diet. What I conclude from the study is if there's a person who has some issues with cardiovascular diseases, I would definitely recommend this person to stick to this diet because the chances are high that the person will improve. You know, there's no question if somebody is already sick, they should go and stick to the diet. But are you sick? If you follow a really low fat, no oil diet, do you have issues with your heart? Are you sick? That's the question. Because some things that works for deceased patients or deceased people isn't necessarily good for healthy people. For example, imagine there is, I don't know, a great medication or maybe a great diet against diarrhea. Great! So if you don't have diarrhea, are you going and eat this food or follow this diet? Probably not. Maybe you will get constipated. You know, who knows? Maybe the opposite happens. The same applies to cardiovascular diseases. If something is beneficial for people with cardiovascular diseases, it doesn't mean that it will be beneficial for you as a healthy person. Fat intake is so important because fat intake is important for hormonal production. People who don't have enough fat in their diet, they may mess up their sexual hormone levels, also like testosterone that is really important for uh, strength development 
Also for women, they may lose their menstrual cycle. Also, fat is important for the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So if you don't have enough fat in your diet, maybe you can get even vitamin deficient, at least for some vitamins. Fat is not bad. It is about what type of fat you eat, that your fatty acid profile is balanced. I made a video on this topic, I will put it in the description down below. And also, if you eat fat in moderation, even you know, if you don't, look at all the Mediterranean population. They eat shit lots of fat. Like, most of their dishes, they basically swim in fat. I don't say that this is a good thing. Yeah, I don't say it. But the reason why they are pretty healthy is actually, in my opinion, that they eat a lot of vegetables. And my theory is that if you eat enough vegetables, it can actually eliminate the negative effects of different diets, even if it is high, high, high in fat. I didn't say some fat is bad. And if you look at the heart disease study, it is actually really similar. The subjects were advised to eat a lot of leafy green vegetables. Why? Because vegetables are good. That's what I told you. And just to make a point that fat is not bad, there was another study that was actually a vegan Atkins study. A vegan low carb, high protein, high fat diet study. And there were two groups, one vegan Atkins group and the other was high carb group. And actually the group that followed this vegan Atkins diet, they showed better improvements. They lost more weight and they had a lower risk for cardiovascular diseases. A self-selected carbohydrate vegan diet containing increased protein and fat from gluten and soy products, nuts and vegetable oils, vegetable oils, vegetable oils. had lipid lowering advantages of a high carbohydrate, low fat weight loss diet, this improving heart disease risk factors. Ta-da! Fat isn't bad. There is also research that shows that following a high fat diet is more beneficial for weight loss and to prevent heart disease. Okay, my take on this topic. As you probably realized, I'm in the pro-fat camp. If you consume fat in moderation, it's not a big deal. Of course, if you diet, you have to be more careful with fat because fat has so many calories per such a low weight or volume. So you have to be really careful weighing out all the fat you want to use. I usually use spoons or I most of the time I even use a scale to be more precise because just one drop of fat can add lots and lots of calories. In general I advise people to eat more whole food and oil is actually processed so fiber is removed, some vitamins are re removed, so basically lots of good things are removed. So if you have the possibility to choose if you use oil or a whole food like nuts or olives for example, I would rather go for whole food. But oil has also other advantages for example, it makes the food more tasty. So if someone hates vegetables, like I hate everything that is green, I don't eat any vegetables and if you can make the dish tastier for this person by adding a bit of oil, then I would rather go for this tablespoon of oil I add to the vegetables and have all the positive effects of vegetables than not eating vegetables at all. So it's actually a cool tool to use to convince someone to eat vegetables because fat makes everything so much tastier. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please share it with others. I would really appreciate it. And let me know what topics should I do my other videos on. I would love to hear your input and I would love to make videos on the topics that are interesting for you. Okay, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button below and subscribe. And see you very soon. Bye.